A. I might have been around the age of maybe between the ages of 18 and 20. I can't quite remember how old I was. But it was before the age of 22 and not before 16. Now I'm 26 years old currently to this day. Okay. My experience was cool as shit. <laughs> it was like the coolest thing I had ever seen in my life. Fucking cool. So I think my chakras were open. You know how like there are these energy vortexes and all your chakras. I think all of them were balanced. And because they were balanced... I was able to catch a glimpse of something from the fifth dimension or fourth. So it was a beautiful summer day. It's gorgeous. The clothes I was wearing, I was happy and I was comfortable with what I was wearing. I was comfortable with the surrounding the grass was cut. It was at this apartment complex in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it was like a bunch of apartments together. And behind the apartments, it was weird. It was like a, almost like a little valley, but it wasn't, it didn't really sink down like a lot, but it was like a bunch of apartments. And so I was walking on the sidewalk behind the apartment and I was just chilling. Oh yeah, I forgot. I know you're probably going to ask this. Eventually someone's going to ask this. Were you on any drugs? Well, okay. I had a little bit of acid. Okay, It was just a little. It was like, see how little my pinky nail is? My pinky nail is small as shit. And... The little acid strip I had, it was probably about as small as my pinky. And this stuff was starting to wear off because I can't remember if I did it the day before or if I did it that day and it was many hours before. But I think it was maybe about 15 or 17 hours that stuff was starting to wear off. But I think the acid, I think it had opened up my chakras and my energy in my body. As I was walking behind the apartment, I look over to my left like this. Well, not like. <laughs> but I was just looking over, like. You know, just looking. And this little thing was hovering there and it had. It had no wings. It, here's a drawing of it. It looked like this, except for its head was smaller, and the whole thing was glowing a solid blue color, like a bright, super bright blue, like a light bright blue. And this thing was shining brighter than the freaking sun. This thing was shining so damn bright. It was crazy how bright this thing was shining. I couldn't believe how bright it was. Like, and it was very sunny outside too. Like, it outshone the sun. I was like, whoa. In my mind, I was thinking, whoa, but I, I was calm. And I didn't let it freak me out. I was just chilling. Like, I just seen it. Like, I'm thinking, cool, man. Yeah. Kitty. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm giving off too much. <laughs> Stop. I'm giving off too much energy. Like, I'm giving, I'm getting too excited, I think is what it is. And she doesn't like it when I get excited, I think, when I'm loud, because it freaks her out. So she's probably going to try to bite me again. 
So I'm probably going to have to try to fight her off or something. But... This thing... It was just floating in the air and it had no wings on. It had no facial expression. That thing, I'll show it to you again here in a minute. But it had no no face. It, it had no wings. It was just chilling there. And then it started moving. It started... It was like... It was like that big, and it started flying or, or hovering like this, like in a one straight shot hover of, it wasn't like going up or down, it was just going straight across. And I was behind the apartment complex, and I walked beside it at a normal walking pace. And I remember trying to take my cell phone out to take a picture of it. But I had gotten really excited, so I accidentally dropped the phone. And in my mind, as I dropped the phone, I was thinking, What? What, kitty? In my mind, I was thinking, I bet you... <laughs> Quit! In my mind, I was thinking, I bet you it's still there. Okay, I'm about to get the cat to get away from me. Hold on. I'm out to get her to, I'm going to put her in the bedroom. Come here, Kiki. Come here. Okay, I shut her ass in the bedroom because she was getting on my damn nerves. I hope, I hope she's not trying to warn me about something crazy. I mean, I don't know. She's probably just flipping out. I mean, I hope I'm not giving off too much energy and hopefully I'm not attracting any bad spirits. I mean, I'm... Come on, I can't be attracting no bad spirits. But this thing I dropped my cell phone and in my mind I thought I bet you it's still up there. And I go down to pick my phone up and when I get it, it's still there in the same spot. It was almost it almost felt like it was waiting for me to get my phone for it to start hovering again or flying or whatever it was doing so at a normal walking speed I walk next to it as it's hovering about about the same height as where my face is about my height level and it was just floating and I just followed it. At one point in time, when I followed it, I wanted to touch it. But I didn't touch it because I didn't know what it was going to do. It might have snapped on me or got mad. I don't know. So I just, I did not touch it, but I was not scared. I was not scared at all. Not at all scared. I was more thinking, this is the coolest shit ever kind of thought. You know what I'm saying? And... I was walking from behind the apartment to in between the apartments and then I walked to the front of the apartments and it was still floating at the same level that it had been floating the entire time. There was nobody else around, everything was calm and peaceful, sunny, beautiful, warm day. It felt like as almost I was vibrating at the same level as the fourth and fifth dimension because currently now we are living in the third dimension the fourth and fifth dimension everything vibrates faster love is fucking awesome because love vibrates at a very fast frequency anger fear destruction vibrates at a very low frequency which sucks ball sack so when the weird little fairy spirit looking thing got to the front of the apartment it's almost like the fucker like it morphed or something you know how like they talk about reptilians how they can how they can shapeshift it's almost like it shapeshifted and it went from this big right as it was flying 
it was getting smaller and smaller like this and it got smaller and when it got smaller it looked exactly like some type of beetle like a like a firefly now I think what might have happened I think the beetle or the firefly because it was black and it had a little white on its back because I've looked at a firefly up close and they have a little bit of white on their back so I think it was a firefly I think what might have happened I might have been seen into the firefly's spirit or seen into its soul into the way it feels of itself in the fourth and fifth dimension and I think I was looking straight into the way it felt in the other dimension like I was connecting with it on a whole nother level of what you would normally connect with an animal or something living and then after it morphed into the beetle which when I seen it I was like whoa that is some cool ass shit oh damn and there was a tennis court in the front of the apartment complex. The little beetle thing, it landed on the fence. And I looked at it kind of like, just normal, like, just looking at it. And I looked around to see if anybody else had seen what I had seen, and there was nobody around. And I looked around to see if there was like some trash on the floor or some shit maybe a cup on the floor, I don't know to see maybe I could pick it up with something maybe I could keep it but I just left it alone I just looked at it looked around and went back inside to tell my boyfriend which he didn't give a shit he didn't give a fuck he was just playing his video games like with his friend they didn't give two shits I know I was thinking damn it that sucks He's not on my level. My level! So, that was my experience with the little thing, and I'm about to show it to you one more time. It looked just like this, except his head was not as big. And yes, it looked like a dress. It had no fingers, no toes, no face, no hair, no wings. It looked very, very similar to this, but his head was just... This is like a bigger... See, really it was only like this big. So I just made it look like a lot bigger than what it really looked like. But it was about that big, I think. Yeah, about that big. But that's a blown up version of what I've seen. And for as long as I live, I will never, ever forget that thing that I've seen. That will always blow my mind. And there was this store called Mystical Orb. This really cool guy, he has this clown tattoo on his arm right here. And it has... The, the clown is holding balloons on his arm. And it's kind of like a head shop store where they sell pipes and cool looking shit like dragon statue stuff and crystals and like really cool metaphysical stuff that I wish I could find a store like that around here. I'm sure there is one here in Fayetteville but I just haven't really looked because I don't really get out that much. But I told him this story and right away he called his daughter and his daughter she immediately drove to that store because I think she wasn't that far away. She drove to the store that I was at and this store is called Mystical Orb, which is a really badass name. And she came to tell me her daughter was about seven years old. Her and her daughter used to garden in their garden together. And she told me that her daughter would be like, Look, Mommy, there's a fairy. And then, so maybe her daughter seen fairies. I don't really know if her daughter seen fairies or not. But, then, and they also have metaphysical books at the store, too. It's in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's called Mystical Orb. And she showed me a book, and it talked all about fairies and stuff. And supposedly there's different kinds. And 
I don't know if I should put this other thing in a different video, but maybe, maybe I should keep this in this video because it really goes along with what I'm saying and it's really fucking awesome. So, there, I went to this bookstore, I think it was called McKay's Bookstore, I think, it was like a really big bookstore, and it was in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it was like used books and stuff, and music, and when I went in there, I was looking in the occult section, just to see, I think, I can't remember if it was occult, I mean, I did look in that section, you know, just to see what there was, because I'm interested in some, like, weird shit, so, I found this book, it was called Mysteries and Secrets of the World, and I was thinking, Holy shit, I want to fucking learn the mysteries and secrets of the world, and there was a, the Pyramids of Egypt was on the front, and it was by this lady named Sylvia Brown, I knew nothing about her, I knew nothing about Sylvia Brown, but I liked the name of the title, and I liked the picture, I liked the pyramids on the front of the book, I don't have the book anymore, I lost all my stuff back when I went to Job Corp, and I left it all in storage, or somebody left it. Well, my dad. But when I read that book, I think it was... Remember, the book was called Mysteries and Secrets of the World by Sylvia Brown. So, I think it was the first story that she had in there, and she talked about fairies. And so, I just want to tell it real quick, and then I will be done. Ah! So, Sylvia Brown talks about... She said she was in... Ireland with her husband I don't know if I don't, it might have been in the 70s I, I don't know but she was in a horse-drawn carriage with her husband and she said there were some bushes next to her with some flowers in them and she said she looked over and she said she seen some type of fairy and she said it was very beautiful and it had hair and a face and wings and like a really pretty little fairy thing floating from flower to flower and she said in the book, she told her husband, or, and she yelled out loud, actually. She said, I just seen a fairy. Like, you know, like when you're freaked out. And then the guy that was driving the horse-drawn carriage of the thing, he said, they're all over the place. Like he was being like, like almost like a smart ass in a way, a little bit. And then her husband was sitting next to her. And then she was saying in the book that he gave her a look like, like, I told you so, the I told you so look. And I've heard stories about Ireland having lots of fairy folklore legends of little people, gnomes or something. Supposedly there's fairy circles to where fairies live there. And she was saying that in Ireland, they kept trying to build airports in different spots. But they said that the fairies didn't like that, so they kept destroying the airports or some shit because they were building it on their land. But that, to me, is very fucking interesting. Stuff that has to do with spirits and weird shit that doesn't make sense, like mystery stuff. I fucking love that shit, man. And I think that'll do it for now. That will do it. Yep. Yay! Well, it's time for me to go to bed and be a slave for tomorrow. So, I will see you later. Bye.